Kali Kuko is an assassin? What? We're here for role play? Let's find out my thoughts on the film right now. All right, let's talk about some movies. We got Kelly Kuko in this one, but before we do, let me introduce myself. I am Frank Zenka. I am your host. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer. Those are some of my stuff behind me. I'm also a working line producer, though not so much lately. I am waiting to get back on set where I was kind of hoping by uh, mid-January there'd be some stuff happening, but uh, I have not heard anything starting just yet. Uh, so, yeah. There's that. But in the meantime, we get to talk about some movies. This is an Amazon Prime original, and this is called Roleplay. I am not a fan of the title at all because uh, it, it speaks of a comedy. Now, this is not a comedy. Okay, so let me just jump right in with that right off the bat. Does it have some comedic moments to it? Sure. But for the most part, it is a drama, uh, an action drama on top of that. So this is, uh, I, I think, Kelly Kuko's foray into the action genre. Uh, she is the lead, and she's playing a, a, a hip girl. Now, one of my favorite hit girls uh, of this kind of genre was actually Gina Davis in The Long Kiss Goodnight. And I know a lot of people hated that movie. I was so happy when I heard... Uh, Critical Drinker's review of it, and he loved that movie, and I was like, oh my god, finally somebody <laughs> likes it as much as I do. But Gina Davis is much better as the hit woman with a family than Callie is in this. Now, I just did a review on Lyft, and Lyft is a decent movie as well, with Kevin Hart, uh, you know, jumping off the comedic wagon just like Callie Cuckoo is here, and jumping into an action role. So it's funny that I just did Lyft because this has a lot of similarities uh, to Lyft. Roleplay and, and Lyft are very, very similar, uh, except with Lyft, you have a very, very accomplished director and a non-accomplished writer. And here we have a non-accomplished writer also who just did a few things and more of a TV director. He's a French director. Uh, his name is Thomas Vincent. He did, a, he did an episode of Reacher, so he knows how to do action, uh, which is an excellent show. I'm going to be doing that, a review on that, uh, once we get the final episode in. So it's funny that we have this kind of similarities between the two of them, uh, these two movies that just got released, one from Netflix and one from Prime. Uh, but I think this is the better movie of the two because... There's a lot more nuance here. And uh, again, the, the name brings about the fact that there's some kind of a comedic thing when it's not. Bill Nye, I'm a big fan of Bill Nye. I think he's great. Uh, ever since I saw him in Underworld, I mean, the guy can act. So he has a very bit role here. And Connie Nielsen is also in this. Of course, you, she's been in everything. She's always great. Uh, she was in Wonder Woman, of course, as uh, the Queen, uh, Polita. And uh, she was also in Three Days to Kill with Haley Steinfeld and Kevin Costner. Uh, and Amber Heard never looked better in, before in that room. She played a great role in that one, too. Uh, if you haven't seen Three Days to Kill, that's a really good movie. Uh, and she was also in Devil's Advocate when she was younger uh, with Keanu Reeves. So, uh, Connie Nielsen has a, has a very long and distinguished career. And uh, she was also in um, The Gladiator as well. So, she's, again, she's done a lot of different roles. Uh, and she's good here too, but she's underutilized. So, I'm not going to really go into the story too much, except for the fact that you know that she's married to David Aiello's character. I know I, know I but butchered his name. Uh, I've been a big fan of his uh, since he was in MI6, which I think was called Spooks in in England. So it was a British uh, series that a lot of great actors came from. Uh, the guy that uh, was in The Hobbit that played the main Hobbit in there, he was also from that show. 
Uh, there was a lot of great, great actors in that show. And uh, David uh, Ayala is one of them. Uh, again, I'm sure I, I'm butchering his name. Uh, of course, he was also in Selma. And I had just been recently watching him also um, in uh, Bass Reeves. So he's doing a great job there, too. The guy can really act. So you have two actors that act completely. They have different styles of acting, for sure. They're, they're, when you put them together, they're so different, though. They, they're, trying, they're trying to have a chemistry that's not there. That's the biggest problem, is they're trying to fake the chemistry by using their acting chops, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So they understand that these people have been married for seven years or whatever it is. So they'd have a shorthand, right? They'd have a shorthand of looks between each other like couples do. A lot of couples do not need to communicate verbally to communicate. They can communicate through body language. They can communicate through uh, their eyes and their expressions. And they tried to do that. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because I don't feel the connection between them. And I think that's one of the things that holds the, the show back. Uh, but at the other side of the coin, the kids, are, the kids all work. Uh, Lucia Ailu, uh, she is, plays the daughter. Uh, she was the cutest thing. Uh, and there was... So, so regardless of the chemistry between them, the action is good. You know, I, I, Kelly Kuko did a good job of adhering to the action role uh, and also adding her little quips to it. The beginning scene with Bill Nye, uh and the banter between them uh, was really good. Really good. And... And David, uh, who also, his character's name is Dave, it's funny. He does a good job of trying to be the fish out of water and being surprised at everything. My favorite reaction to a spy that is supposed to be like the best friend where they didn't realize she was a spy uh, was an alias. And uh, Bradley, I don't know if you realize this, but Bradley Cooper was in there when he was like a nobody. Uh, and Jennifer Garner was the lead on that. And when she starts kicking ass, he's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was my favorite reaction uh, of any type of these spy movies where the person doesn't know the other person's a spy. Or in this case, an, an assassin. Uh, so, yeah, so we have good car chases in here. Uh, you know, when she's hunting someone, she's like, hiya, <laughs> and shoots him in the head. So she added her little quip uh, to it that may have not been written, but that's how she played it, and it worked. Uh, and then she also always says, she says like two times that, oh, I have a plan. But then they get captured. I'm like, this is the worst plan ever. So uh, just like Lyft, there are holes to the, uh, the script. I'm like, this is a horrible plan. <laughs> if this was a plan, it's horrible. You need a new plan. <laughs> I can understand her trying to get close to Connie Nielsen's character who was hunting her, who also raised her and taught her. And that's the other problem is that Connie Nielsen's character is supposed to have taught her, which means that she would be the master, right? So she would be at a higher level, even if she was brought up as a child, the experience of the older person would always trump the person of, of the younger person who is, you know, the, uh, the person who's being taught, you know, the student. And Connie Nielsen barely puts up a fight, you know, so I, I, I didn't buy that. I think the whole ending is not very good. Uh, and uh, I wish it was, I wish it was better. Um, there's been, you know, a whole bunch of different little fight scenes that have been really good, uh, you know, for ending, uh, with, with female protagonists, uh, the hunt being one of them, you know, the hunt with, uh, with, um, I forgot the characters' names, uh, 
but the one from Glow. Uh, so she, uh, uh, they were, they were just kicking each other's ass. <laughs> I mean, uh, and that's what I kind of expected to see here was a very gritty fight scene where either one of them could have come out on top and, and we didn't get that. So the ending really needed to be reshot. I don't know who, I don't know who approved that ending, but it was not good. And, uh, so yeah, and, and you know, killing the bad guy of course, negated everything, and I, you know, she's, she's wanted, they know who she is now, they know where she is for the most part, she knows who she's working with, I mean, who, she, who she's traveling with as far as her family, who she's living with, and through facial recognition, very easily, you know, you could find these people, no matter if they changed their names or whatever, unless they left the country. So, I didn't buy the whole ending at all. Uh, but a lot of the things leading up to the ending was actually very good, where I was very interested to see where the story was going to go. So uh, so it had its ups and downs, is basically what I'm saying. But overall, the film is enjoyable. Uh, it's a good action piece. The acting is good. Kelly Kuko is always fun to watch. Uh, David does a good job as well, but the chemistry between them is not really there. Uh, so I don't feel like they've been together for seven years, even though they tried. As actors, they tried. Uh, they 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 did you know break out some of the uh, uh, some of the tricks of the trade uh, to try to get a nonverbal communication thing going, but it it just wasn't it didn't hit that level that uh, like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, there was that chemistry there. Uh, between the two of them. Of course, they ended up getting married after that anyway. So, for all I know, they were sleeping together on set uh, to get that chemistry. But the Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt chemistry is not there with this one, unfortunately. So, anyway, that's it for me. Did you see it? Did you like it? Am I on the ball? Am I off it? Hitting the mark completely? Uh, but again, that you know, for uh, you know, a movie on streaming... It's, I think it's very good. So uh, you just have to take the holes uh, of the of the script and the plot with a grain of salt. That's all. And, uh, you know, you're not paying for it outside of your, your, your monthly fee. All right. Well, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, check out some of my other videos that are going to pop up at the end. Also, give me the thumbs up. Click the bell icon, because if you're not subscribed, then why the hell not? Because we talk about film, we talk about comics, we talk about board games, anything that you kind of want, we kind of talk about it here on the channel. And uh, I am uh, trying to grow the channel out, so help me out there. Uh, also, Lords of LA, Issue 2, The Late Pledge, if you missed it. Uh, we are going to be doing a late pledge at the end of the month to get everybody to get recoup their uh, money after all the all they spent on Christmas and Monica and everything else. And uh, Mark Spears, who does uh, Spawn covers and things to that effect, uh, is doing the artwork for a new game that we're putting together, which is a deck builder area control based on classic monsters. So we're doing play testing on that as well. We're doing a Dark Oz expansion. So it's going to be great. So we're going to be launching that in the next few months as well. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and you guys have an awesome week.